Hey everybody, it's Felix. I'm looking forward to sharing my extra labor project with you all. Um, I am not complete with the project, but I pulled out what I had so far and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you guys. Um, so in my uh, plan before the semester started, I said that I cared a lot about grammar and thought it was a key component of professionalism. I think um, writing with writing fluently, um, concisely, and um, properly is a key step to becoming a professional. Um, so what I did is I ordered a copy of Strunk and White. Here is the book, um, The Elements of Style. Strunk and White are the two authors. Um, and this book is kind of a grammar manual, if you will. Um, I'll show a little example. Um, so they have different uh, subheadings and they explain a little bit under, underneath. Um, so for example, they have um, ones about quotes, like where to put quotation marks, where to put parentheses, which words are mis commonly misused and so on. So I picked out three um, from my final project and I'm going to share them with you guys now. Okay, so the first rule is to use definite, specific, and concrete language. Um, so I'm going to give two examples and describe which one should be used. Um, so example one is a period of unfavorable weather set in, and the second is it rained every day for a week. And I think, so first one, a period of unfavorable weather set in, the second, it rained every day for a week. And we can see the second one is so much more concise. Not only is it shorter, but the first one actually, like, you can't really tell, you can't really gather all the details from it the way you can the second one. It rained every day for a week. You know it rained, you know um, how long it rained for. This, the first one is just saying a period of unfavorable weather set in. You don't know how long the period is. You don't know what kind of weather, you know, it's specifically rain because of the second example. So I think the net net here is that when we try to expand our sentences, we not only harm the readability of it because it becomes, I think readability is worth, um, it becomes not as, not as fluent, not as crisp, but we actually lose details because we're not getting what we otherwise would be getting if we cut it down and provide specific details. Okay, second rule is to avoid the use of qualifiers. Qualifiers are something, words like rather, very, little, pretty. Um, so for example, um, you should be very aware of his exam rules is something where you don't really need the very. You can just say you should be aware of his exam rules. And I think that gets the same point across um, without using an extra word and just kind of makes it um, more choppy. And if you're adding that extra word, and this is something I'm, uh, I commit way too much. And it's another reason why I wanted to conduct a project like this, because it's going to make me more cognizant, uh, make me more aware of these errors that are so common in our writing and in our speech too. Um, lastly, um, this is mostly for writing, um, uh, analytical writing. Um, and quotations, you uh, do not explain too much while also making sure that the reader understands who is speaking. Um, so when you are setting up quotes, you do not need to describe them. For example, you do not need to say, Constantine consolingly said, Felix, I'm sorry. You can just say, Constantine said, Felix, I'm sorry. So you don't want to kind of spoil and describe the quote. You just want to give as little detail as you can while also making sure the reader understands who is speaking. Um, okay, so those are my three rules. Um, feel free to ask any questions. I'm here in the room um, to answer them and I appreciate your listening. Thank you.